Life is a racket. And you and I are racketeers. And if you can get beyond the horror of that, to just be with the is of it, I say that there's power in that, and you have to see whether, whether what I say turns out to be so. I'm talking about the possibility that accepting your own deep, profound inauthenticity, accepting that your life is being used by it, I'm saying that accepting that, not like the truth, not like something you believe, but accepting it as a possibility in which you are willing to stand and look out at your everyday being in the world and your engagement with your everyday concerns, I'm saying that the acceptance of that inauthenticity will lead to a breaking up of the of the resignation which you are. The resignation of the environment of being into which you wake up when you wake up in the morning. The day by day in this petty pace about which Shakespeare spoke, not like a set of circumstances, because I know you've got a lot of titillating circumstances in your life, but like a mood out of which one lives. I know how to put on the good face. I know how to look good, and I know you know how to look good. And television and most of what we consider to be public is about looking good. And if you look out from the possibility that your life is about looking good, you're going to see that a hell of a lot of what you're up to is about looking good. You don't mean it. And sometimes you know you don't mean it. You don't even believe in the things you believe in, and sometimes you know you don't believe in them. But you keep looking good about it. You're afraid to express your own doubts for fear of not looking good. And again, while I don't profess to be telling the truth, I'm not a guy in a diner. So I'm inviting you to look out from the possibility that you are a racketeer, that your relationships, that your work, your job, the things in your life are really about getting these payoffs. And the best place to look is those things about which you're complaining in life. I don't like. I don't want. You see, you and I are willing to sacrifice the quality of our life for these payoffs. Like I said, in our relationships, we're willing to sacrifice love. I mean, real the real presence of love. Like, maybe you can remember... We're willing to sacrifice that for being right and making the other person wrong. We're willing to sacrifice that to dominate the other person, to manipulate them, to get them to be the way we want them to be, and to avoid any manipulation or domination from them. We're willing to sacrifice love in order to win, to avoid loss. We're willing to sacrifice love in order to justify ourselves. If any inkling of an opening for generosity shows up in the relationship, we close it down very quickly in order to keep ourselves justified in the position that we're in. We're willing to give up, to sacrifice our own self-expression. See, on your tombstone, they're going to what they're going to put on your tombstone when you die. Something was left, and we don't know what it was. See, they ain't going to put on your tombstone, used up. Because you ain't going to get used up. No, you're going to save it till Prince Charming comes. Then you're going to give it. But not now.
Not here. Not for this. Not for what you got. 